what's going on guys it's me again and uh here's another update on the 1964 dodge custom 880 so for today we're going to be servicing the uh, transmission uh fluid and the filter uh this is a torque plate torque bah, torque flight three speed push button automatic and uh here's the uh, part number if you need it uh, it's a wix filter that i'm going to be using today it's a 58658 right there and this includes both the gasket and get on out there you go and the filter also yeah it's pretty nice let's uh, chalk off the wheels uh, especially in the back and uh, we'll use the uh, jack stands and the jack on the left and right side of the front part of the uh, front side of the car. I'm going to be draining the torque converter also. So the torque converter access plate is going to be just right behind this uh, exhaust pipe right here. So you see this little gap right there? That's the access plate and when you remove that you can access the torque converter and remove the drain plug. Now if I look closely uh, there's probably a bolt right there. You can see it bulging out and there's one right here one over here uh, yep and probably another one all the way up there so grand total of four bolts holding in this access plate so i think you guys have seen that there's a uh, quite amount of a uh, sludge that's on the uh, underside of the uh, transmission oil pan and the torque converter access plate get some brake clean get some chisels or some minus drivers and some dental picks and most importantly, a catch pan and safety glasses. I can't tell you how many times I got freaking brake clean in my eyes. It burns. It really burns. Chiseling away all the gunk. The, uh, the torque converter access plate is actually looking like an access plate rather than a prehistoric dig site. Yeah, so did so right here you can see a bolt, bolt there, another bolt back over here, and probably another one all the way up here just like this one. The uh, the four bolts or yeah the four bolts that's holding in the uh, torque converter access plate is 11 millimeters. The ones back here on the top left corner, up here and all the way up up there you're gonna need to use a socket with an extension the ones down here that's closest to the exhaust uh, pipe you can't fit a you can't fit a socket up there so you'll need a 11 millimeter wrench okay so uh once you get the last bolt all loosened up just make sure you're ready to uh catch the torque murder access plate and torque converter access plate should slide out just like that and look at that more gunk is coming off uh, this is a serious archaeological dig site going on here so um i was able to scrub off some of the gunk off the torque uh, torque converter access plate but uh pretty stuck on there so uh, I think it's time for me to pop it into the uh, degreaser tub so uh, after the uh, degreaser is doing its thing and uh, taking off all that gunk off the uh, torque converter access plate we're just gonna go take take a look at the beautiful torque converter itself in its well somewhat pristine shape where the uh, original factory paint is still there let's take a look at the uh, torque converter shall we Yep, still in its original color. Pretty cool. Awesome history right there. Since we're here, we can actually rotate the engine until we can get to the uh, torque converter um, drain plug and let's uh, um, drain the torque converter. I'm going to rotate the engine with a remote start switch. The connections are that follows. The first connection of the remote start switch goes to the positive. Second connection goes down to the starter's uh, smaller solenoid connection down there. You'll notice it because 
um, you'll, you'll notice that uh, one wire that's going to the starter is thinner and the other one is the heavier gauge one which is directly from the uh, battery. You want to connect it to the smaller gauge wiring. You can also remove the fan shroud and the fan up front and get a, a breaker bar and rotate the engine by hand. I think you can see that right there. Yeah, it's that size. So when you're using a remote starter switch, you're gonna want to keep an eye out for a really, really small bolt uh, that's connected to the torque converter. That's the torque, conver uh, torque converter drain bolt. You're gonna want to find that one. All right, so I'm gonna I'm going to start rotating the engine, and it's gonna get a little bit loud. Nope. But yeah, you get the point. Uh, just uh, find that uh, drain plug that I said earlier. For converter uh, drain bolt is a 11 also 11 millimeter also. It's a little bit of a pain in the ass to get up there, so you might want to drop down or drop the uh, exhaust crossover pipe just a little bit. There's two bolts that connect to the manifold on the right side, and there's two on the left side so that you can gain access to that uh, drain bolt a little bit better. So uh, since we're going to be draining the torque converter, we're gonna need another catch fan. No shit, Sherlock. The other catch fan was just to catch all the gunk that was coming off the torque converter uh, access plate. I was able to get the drain plug out. Pretty red in color, which is pretty nice to see. It was kind of awkward in a way, cause I had to, at the same time, I had to use a, I had to use a ratchet but then I had to disconnect it as soon as the drain plug fell off of the uh, torque converter. So it was like, it was like musical chairs. So uh, just before I button up the uh, torque converter um, drain plug back on, and it seems to be brass, so you might want to be careful with wrenching on it or wrenching on it too hard. The torque spec for these are, I believe, 14 inch pounds. Let me go check. Okay, so. Uh... We're looking through the uh, man service manual right now. Converter drain plug, 14 foot, uh, yeah, it wasn't inch pounds, it's 14 foot pounds. So yeah, it's not it's not tight at all. It's probably just like, uh, just snug is good enough. So uh, when you're taking off the uh, transmission pan bolts, you're gonna need a 13 millimeter. Uh, so I'm gonna be uh, pretty much loosening the uh, bolts in a fashion where one side is gonna hang a lot lower than one side so that it's gonna direct uh, the fluid, or more like I can direct the fluid where I want it to flow. These bolts are pretty much hand tight, which is kind of ominous. Let's uh, pretty much keep going with uh, the pan removal. So after you guys uh, pretty much remove the uh, most of the bolts that's um, holding up this pan, kind of like in a whole entire C shape, leave the ones back here so that you can lower the pan like this, as I think uh, kind of like that, so that you can direct the uh, fluid from the lowest side of the pan first, without uh, you know having it you know splash up into your face or something like that. So after you get uh, the uh, 
uh, what is it, the transmission oil pan off, or I mean a transmission oil pan bolts off in a C pattern shape, you want to get a uh, rubber mallet and a minus driver. And you want to go between the seam of the, uh, what is it, the transmission pan and the, between the uh, casting. And you want to pry it loose gently. You don't want to scar the, or you want to gouge out the uh, mating surface. Yeah, the pan's going to come loose soon because uh, I'm seeing the uh, fluid dripping more intensely. <laughs> you clear from the splash zone as much as possible. There we go. There it goes. All right. Yeah, this is the um, uh, the Niagara Falls that can be observed from in, uh, underneath the uh, any other Dodge that has a A727 torque flight. And we're gonna let that drain out for well, how long ever, how long uh, needs to drain out, and then we'll just uh, pop it off, um, keep popping it off after it becomes a slow leak. All right, uh, the leak is uh, pretty much slowing down. Uh, you know, yeah, I'm, I think I'm gonna bite the bullet and uh, just drop one side of the whole entire pan. Yeah, it's probably gonna become like oh, seriously Niagara Falls. Uh, gotta, just gotta get in the right position. Catch the fluid. Catching the fluid seems like a seems like a joke at this point. Catch man's not really doing his job. Noted. And uh, you guys will be on the front lines to witness uh, how much fluid's gonna. Oh shit! Here it comes. There we go. Uh, yeah. As you can see, the fluid is pink. Yeah, encouraging to see there's no rusting on the inside. Of the transmission and there you have it boom and soaked in tranny fluid and uh i'll continue to loosen the uh, bolts around the other side of the pan oh and uh, if you're wondering on what the smoke is that you're seeing that's just a mosquito coil yeah there's a mosquito coil and brake lean side by side that's not really safe yeah i live on the edge not really i'm just a fool really <laughs> well i'd say that control leak worked quite well i am not going to undo that last one if I want to keep my face. Yeah, that's some old tranny fluid. It's kind of, uh, kind of irritating my skin a bit. You know, just the usual, probably filled with asbestos dust or something like that. I don't know. All right, I'm gonna take off the last bolt and see it. Let's see if I can uh, support it. Yeah, then my hand's not really in the best position possible. All right, that's the last bolt. Oh shit. There we go. There it is. There's the, uh, there's a valve body, the filter. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty clean. Nice. That's what I'd like to see. We do not want to see rust in here. I'm going to clean up a little bit here because I think some of the fluid kind of uh, splashed out of the pan a little bit. But uh, I'll show you more kind of uh, in depth on what it looks like underneath the uh, transmission. Uh, so as promised, I'll let you guys take a look at what's... Uh, yeah, I mean, the valve body is in pristine condition. Yeah, it's pretty clean. Yeah, pretty clean. And that filter is pretty dirty. I think you guys can see that. Uh, let's see if I can point the flashlight up here. Yeah, so you see uh, uh, where my shadow is pointing at? This is a lighter color, color, and then over here is really dark, so it's probably clogged. All right, I'll let you uh, take a look at the oil pan back there, too. All right, let's see what uh, 50 years of uh, uh, not changing that pan looks like. Okay, so... That looks like... Feels like dirt. <laughs> okay. 50 years of dirt, so you could probably sell that for quite a lot. Heh. I'm joking. And uh, I think you can see it. There's a bunch of shiny bits of stuff right there. 
Yeah, you can see that. Well, yeah, um, aside from that, maybe that's normal. That much metal shaving, that's normal. Some dirt. And the cork gasket is pretty crusty as well. All right, so um, just before I technically uh, give it a rest for the day, I thought I'd uh, sand off the mating surface of the uh, uh, transmission pan uh, gasket mating surface. And I believe, uh, let's see, yeah, 220 grit works pretty good on this surface. This is pretty much uh, what it looks like now. Okay, so this is pretty much before, uh, this is after, and before is kind of like that. Yeah, it's pretty gross looking. Yeah, overall, the other side looks uh, pretty good. Yeah, so before you install your new gasket, you want to clean off the mating surface very well. Uh, I believe this is, uh, hmm, let's see. Hmm. Yeah, this is 220. So this one's probably like 350. So 350 is pretty good. Or, yeah, 300 is a pretty good choice too. And have a, uh, uh, what is it, a chisel. But unfortunately, I don't have a plastic chisel. You would want to use a plastic chisel if you're scraping away the old gasket material like I have over there um, in the pile, uh, in that drain pan. But yes, uh, it's looking pretty clean. But yes, uh, I'll probably start buttoning it up maybe the day after tomorrow. And hopefully show you the process of uh, installing the filter and uh, reinstalling the oil pan and buttoning up the, the uh, what is it called? The uh, torque converter uh, access panel as well. Or access plate, I believe it's called.